soccer ball and tracks. Hello world, I'm Maya Sendermeyer and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my vlog series. So far, I have been able to share my experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum, or rather have Asperger's syndrome. A second thing that I will do is provide uh, my two cents on uh, what's going on with autism in the media. And a third area entails uh, providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum. I will also reach out to your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers, and anybody who is inside the autistic community. And finally, I will cover topics and things that I'm passionate about, along with sharing the day in the life of Maya Sendermeyer. So check it out. I just got off work today, uh, but anyway, I wanted to let you know that I um, have uh, some great news in updating my vlogs. As you guys know and you've seen on YouTube, there's been a new video vlog every day around 8.30 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time and 11 or 5.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time right here in the mainland United States uh, yeah, it was being uh, and then it's another uh, was it 2.30 a.m. Uh, I don't know what you uh, call the standard time for Hawaii because they're six hours behind us right now with daylight saving time believe me I know I've been out there before but anyway I wanted to let you know that I was talking to one of my colleagues and because of the work that I do here, I'm um, a staff and a student, I have access to uh, all kinds of cameras and one of them that she suggested that I use is a little Progo, which are very popular. I've been thinking about wanting to buy me one of those little suckers anyway. If I remember, I thought a Progo was uh, waterproof, but I'm not sure. Um, we were talking about another big project that I'm really excited about. Uh, so please be sure to stay tuned for that big project idea. And I look forward to continuing to vlog on here. So check it out. What YouTube? I uh, got a like from uh, Casey Neistat's uh, official YouTube page uh, for his series 368 because I clicked like on one of his videos. Thank you so much, Casey. You are awesome. Be sure to check me out. Anyway, I'm on my way to go and get myself uh, some lunch at this uh, awesome place. You know it well. go sit at this really awesome spot over here but I was about to go outside YouTube What I wanted to do is sort of talk about employment for uh, individuals on the spectrum, and I'd like to talk about cues and nuances. Basically, I wanted to talk about people, or employers, and the difference between ones who are interested versus those who are disinterested. And I know a lot of you that are becoming, uh, or they're transitioning into adulthood, and a majority of the time, uh, I know what it's like to struggle finding jobs and 
dealing with uh, the interview process, competition, all that. But what I wanted to talk about are employers who are interested versus those who are not interested. And I wanted to give you a few examples. Now, when you deal with any type of relationship, I mean, you are dealing with a professional relationship here. And just like you deal with a boyfriend, that's a personal relationship. And just like with a boyfriend or with a guy or with a girl, whatever you have, uh, they're gonna show you that they're interested while others are gonna show you that they're not so interested or not interested at all. And one example that I wanted to talk about is uh, a situation where uh, employers say they're going to hire you and you say yes, you uh, take their offer and uh, they give you a start date or they give you a training date. And you go up there, uh, you show them your ID and suddenly your name is not on the list. And the person that you were supposed to meet with is not there. And they say something like, well, I'm sorry, uh, such and such, I'm gonna call him Jeff. I'm um, sorry, uh, Jeff had to reschedule at the last minute. Uh, his daughter got sick, uh, could you come back tomorrow? So you reschedule with uh, Jill, who's the receptionist, and she says, okay, see you tomorrow. So you show up the next day, and sure enough, again, Jeff is not there. And you get another story um, ooh, Jeff had to go out of town because uh, his grandma died. Or another example that would uh, be a runaround that they're not interested is that uh, they keep telling you, well, oh, we can't do it today, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it in two weeks, we'll do it in a month, whatever. So there's setbacks and postponing, postponements. Everything is just constantly pushed back. There's nobody there to talk to you that you need to speak with. They're always never available. So that's a sign that they're not interested in hiring you. Now, I don't know why in the world they promised, or an employer promises to hire somebody in the first place if uh, they're not going to be up front and if they're not going to hire them at all. I just, I don't understand that kind of logic and I don't think I ever will. I mean, I've seen uh, quite a few people now that uh, were promised positions and they said that their employers told them they were hired and they were let down. I just, I don't, again, I don't get it why in the world they say yes in the first place and make it sound like they got the job when they never intended on giving them the position in the first place. Like back when I was uh, 20 years old, the first time I experienced this was with a girl who um, I used to be friends with. I believe I've talked about her before. Uh, she was promised a waitress position at a restaurant up in Minnesota. They're not here in Georgia, but they're in Florida and they're more of a Midwestern restaurant, which is similar to um, IHOP, the International, the International House of Pancakes, where she was gonna work as a server. And she would go in and they would tell her, hey, we can't do this today. We have enough people on staff. We can do it tomorrow. And then she called in the next day to speak with the guy that hired her. And he supposedly wasn't there, according to her mother. And then she went in for the third time and they told her that they couldn't work with her right now because uh, again, they were overly staffed. And then I heard a story with another friend of mine, uh, the one who is now uh, living in a different part of Atlanta that's not really uh, transportation accessible. Uh, but years ago, he was promised a position at, uh, his, at the place of his childhood friend where, uh, where he cleans pools for a living and I guess makes pretty good money. And then my friend um, had a degree in uh, computer science and uh, they agreed to hire him and they were supposed to bring him on in October. Well, October came around and they postponed his, uh, his date back a month. Well, that wasn't the only thing that they did. That uh, employer kept promising to meet with my friend 
and every time he would go in there he'd just suddenly disappear and suddenly something else came up. Eventually it got to a point where uh, yes he kept postponing his uh, his start date back months month like first it was pushed to uh, November then it was pushed to December and then his uh, boss really just you know, this supposed boss uh, just didn't bother to uh, contact him again so he just gave up and decided they weren't uh, really all that interested so those are some signs and then there have been a couple of times where I was promised positions and it never worked out like years ago uh, before I got my job at CLD, I'd say about a year, uh, I had uh, I was offered a position at a uh, at a salon for kids, and she w would just always be on the phone when I would show up for work, and she would never do anything that we talked about. And then uh, she kept changing her game plan about what I was supposed to be doing, and then she started blowing me off and te leaving me text messages like we're not meeting today thank you without really giving me a reason and then saying that well we're not meeting today we're gonna meet on Wednesday and then when Wednesday would roll around uh, we're not meeting today thank you I'll let you know about Friday so I just decided to quit and then there's another position where I was promised a job where I could do a, some assistantship work thank you very much all right just a fork all right so it was um anyway I was just my my lunch is here but um, it was some sort of um, assistance type work and it, I said yes because I used to work with these people before and they uh, and you know uh, we talked we even agreed on a start date and everything and then when it got to the start date they said that they wouldn't need me for another two weeks and that they had to uh, order a workstation. Well, I never heard from them. They never called me. I just told them, hey, I'm ready when you are. And then uh, I called them a couple weeks later and uh, they told me that there were some major setbacks. Suddenly they were, you know, they have all these uh, financial problems. And then the, uh, my su the supervisor who I used to work for is um, going out of town uh, in, uh, in another month. And he said, well, well, it'll be in another month. So I just decided to give up on that. But um, anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys about setbacks, which you can do. So if you run into a scenario like that, don't beat yourself up. There's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with the company and there's something wrong with whoever's running the company because it's obvious that you're not the one who's irresponsible, they are. And it shows you that they're shady people that don't know how to do business with people and they don't know what they're doing, they don't know how to hire people. I mean, sure, I mean, you could be a great employee, you could be a great faculty or staff member, whatever the case may be, but you just, don't beat, your, don't beat yourself up, but Invest whatever you do invest your time in other people that care that aren't going to give you the red flag. So Anyway, I'm out of time for today, but if you like what I'm doing, please be sure to uh, Share uh, this on with your uh, networks um, For those of you that are uh, transitioning into adulthood whether you're teachers or wherever you are parents Please be sure to share this video because I think it's really critical for your children to see so Anyway, I'm about to uh, sign off now, but until next time, I'm Maya Sendermeyer. My friends is a Carolina slaw dog, or that's how hot dogs are done in the Carolinas. So basically, you have coleslaw, which is obviously why it's called a slaw dog, and there's chili and hot dog. So. Um, it's like a chili dog with a little zing, so I'm about to try it. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, that fork is too flimsy, but... Mm. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. I think I'm gonna like this dog.